Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to call the informational hearing, uh, the informational uh, education committee hearing on the California Association of Student Councils uh, this February 24th. It is now 1.30 and we shall start our hearing. Why don't I take one minute and uh, with the permission of the sergeants, could, could I ask the students to move up if they so desired? Because they're all so far back there. Um, come on up, guys. Don't, don't be afraid. We're all family today. Okay, uh, welcome again. Uh, this begins our hearing, and I thank you for your presence. I'd like to welcome everyone back. It's been a while. Uh, I'd also like to welcome back Assemblymember Olson to the committee, and I'll give her a moment to say hi in, in just a second. Uh, we have invited the Senate Education Committee members to join us and welcome them as well. Today we are hearing from student leaders who will possibly be our future state and local leaders. Who knows? This may be your seat one day. Um, the California Association of Student Councils brings together student leaders from across schools from, from schools across the state. So again, we welcome you here today and all the good work you do, we thank you. They have worked hard on developing policy proposals that they believe will improve the educational experience in California. And again, I know you've been doing a lot of work and preparation on this. I thank your teachers, your supporters, your organization, and certainly you, the students that are before us. Uh, Assemblymember Olson, Vice Chair Olson, uh, would you like to just give a welcome? Sure. Thank you, Chairman. Just want to say welcome to all the students participating today, as well as to your faculty members and advisors for helping you with this opportunity. There is nothing more important than being engaged at your age and level to pursue opportunities later in life. And just looking at the table of contents, it sounds like you guys have come up with some really strong proposals on timely topics. We look forward to hearing from you about them today. And then don't hesitate to engage with us even after today. Um, participating in government is an ongoing dialogue and conversation. So thank you for being here. I give a shout out to my constituents in particular and look forward to your presentation. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Vice Chair Olson. Um, with that, uh, too, I, I, I again want to just wish you a welcome and uh, again encourage you, as did the Vice Chair, to communicate through us, through, uh, throughout the year with us. Um, this is an ongoing process. Bills change. They change a little. They change a lot. As they go through the process, new ideas come up. So again, do not be afraid to engage us, or if you have another local legislator, do not be afraid to engage them. And this place is made up of regular people. One, two, uh, one day, two, you could be up here. I was a high school teacher for over 20 years, and one day we'll go back. But, uh, you know, I like to think of myself as a regular guy, and I hope you like to think of yourself as a, as a regular gal, if you will, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, with that, I'd like to welcome, uh, oh, we have another assembly member who's just arrived. If you, Ms. Young Kim. Well, I would like to also echo the uh, comments made by our uh, chair and vice chair of this committee. I want to know by show of hands if there are anyone from Orange County. All right, welcome. I represent the 65th Assembly District, which is in Northwest Orange County. So I welcome you, and I too I look forward to your presentations. It takes guts. It takes courage 
to speak before the committee like this and for all the work that you have put in to come up with these proposals. Uh, I think it, it says a lot about your leadership. And as the chair mentioned, uh, you may be taking over one of our seats in the near future. So I look forward to having some of you uh, join us. It is a lonely place up here, so come and join us. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, so at this point, uh, just, just to mention, some, you'll also see some folks come and go because the schedules up here tend to be pretty busy so they can't spend the entire time here. I'm going to spend the entire time with you today. Uh, but again, if they have to go, they may even come back because sometimes they have to take a six, five, you know, seven, eight minute meeting just to get informed on a topic that might be going on in their district or might be very important to someone. So I uh, just know that things come and go up here pretty rapidly. And, and just because you might not know uh, that who, who's up here, I do. And understand they're here to listen and, and welcome you as well. So with that, I'd like to welcome Kyle uh, Mahirian from Beverly Hills High School, who is the California Association of Student Councils Education Policy Directin Director. Uh, Kyle. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman O'Donnell, Vice Chair Olson, and Assembly Member Kim, uh, as well as all others in attendance. I am Kyle Marion, um, and I'm dire the director of the Student Advisory Board on Legislation and Education, um, which is also referred to as SABLE. So uh, your staff members prob have probably gotten to know me in the past couple of days as I've been up here in Sacramento hassling them um, to try and get a spot bill or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll just start off. At SABLE, um, students have considered some of the most prevalent issues in the California education system and have convened in an effort to create solutions. Uh, this day, February 24th, 2016, we'll see a diverse and exceptional delegation present on the behalf of the 6.23 million students of California. Um, they've all worked extremely hard to draft these proposals and have made tremendous strides since the beginning of the SABLE process. Uh, SABLE has been a life-changing ex life experience for myself as well as a lot of other delegates that are attending. Um, so I first attended SABLE last year and I was able to present to the Senate Education Committee. Uh, fortunately, my proposal got adopted as Senate Bill 532 and as a result of that, I truly felt that the student voice was not limited, that it could be so much more than just going to school um, and trying to make change locally, that you can actually um, create something for the students in the state of California to represent them and to hold power um, and to empower your peers. Uh, so I feel that the main stakeholders um, now have the ability to influence uh, the education system like they so rightfully deserve. Um, at SABLE, delegates are pushed to be their best selves and to produce astounding results. They gain agency over their directive and are enabled to eliminate the margins that have restricted them for so long. Um, with that, I would like to introduce our state president, Shauna Dute, who will speak about CASC and the need for funding, along with committees who will be speaking about standardized testing, Common Core, mental health, the student voice, the role of technology in schools, and the stu and potential student approval on the LCAP process. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman O'Donnell, Vice Chair Olson, Assemblymember Kim, and staff. I'd like to begin by thanking you all for taking the time today to be with us and providing the students with an unparalleled opportunity to have their voice heard and contribute to the discussion surrounding education policy. My name is Shauna Dute, the State President of the California Association of Student Councils and a senior at Beverly Hills High School. I'm here to talk about an issue that is personal for me and for so many students across the state, our organization, the California Association of Student Councils. We were founded nearly 70 years ago by the California Department of Education and the California Association of School Administrators, ACSA's predecessor. And we were founded to bring students together and provide a clear avenue for student voice in Sacramento. Over the years, our organization has expanded our role to providing students throughout the state with critical leadership training and has played an even larger role in enhancing the role of student voice in decision making both at a local level and up here in Sacramento. Between 1985 and 2012, we received annual state funding as part of the governor's budget. However, when categorical funding was eliminated, 
our line item was taken away with it. Since then, we've been forced to take drastic measures. Now, all of our funding comes from fees for services, donations, and grants. We've been operating at a budget deficit for several years and have had to raise our costs for our conferences to compensate for our lack of funding. As a result, our costs have become more prohibitive and our conferences have become more restricted to only those who can afford to come. The students who stand to benefit the most from our leadership trainings can't afford them, and our pool of representation has continued to diminish. We have made consistent efforts to include all voices, but it has become nearly impossible to do so as certain groups of students simply can't afford to attend. Luckily for me, I was able to get involved with this organization early on in my high school career, but I'm not the student who needed the training. The students who can't afford our conferences deserve these opportunities so much more than I do, and we need to ensure that they can get involved if they choose to do so. This organization has truly transformed my life's directive. Last year, as the Governmental Affairs Director, I was able to get real first-hand experience as a lobbyist advocating for student voice. I worked with various policymakers, their staff, and lobbying groups to get two pieces of legislation, which were both introduced at last year's conferences, signed into law. SB 532 and AB 1204. This year, as state president, I've worked diligently with the executive directors of AXA, PTA, and the county superintendent's organization to expand our connections with other stakeholder associations. I was also offered the opportunity to be the sole student member on the superintendent's state accountability and continuous improvement task force, which is discussing the future of accountability for students throughout the state. These opportunities have really opened my eyes to what really goes on in politics and have shaped both my college and career goals. Other students need and deserve the opportunities I've had, and with the current state of funding, those students are being left out. As a result, we are asking you as legislators to propose an augmentation to the state budget for $150,000 for our organization. This is not unprecedented, as YMCA Youth and Government recently received a an annual $150,000 line item in the 2013-2014 budget. As I spoke with their youth governor, I asked him how they were able to do so. And he, he expressed to me that their board was able to hire well-connected lobbyists to do this work for them and acquire that money. Our, our organization doesn't have any lobbyists. With only two full-time adult staff members, we are completely student-run and student-led from top to bottom. But we still need this money to continue to survive. Over the past several months, we have been working with the California Department of Education to reinstate this funding. The Chief Deputy Superintendent, Glenn Price, has informed me that they are prepared to place a budget change proposal on our behalf, and they have the state superintendent's support. We simply need this request to start from the legislature to ensure that it goes through the governor. This small amount of money is really an investment in the future of California students. It gives us the opportunity to continue to inspire students from across the state. Additionally, it allows us to continue to advocate on the behalf of all students, not just a select few. We play a critical role in the democratic process as we continuously provide legislators and other education policymakers with insights on student opinion that can only be found by talking to actual students. Through our annual conferences here in Sacramento, our work with policymakers and their staff and other groups that influence education policy, we really are the voice of students at the Capitol. Instead of having consultants provide these entities with information, we provide real first-hand accounts of how policy is being implemented at a local level. Without this money, this valuable insight may be lost. As you'll see in these upcoming proposals, the students have a valuable voice. As the largest stakeholders in California's education system, students need to have their voice heard, both locally at school sites and at the state, and our organization provides students with that opportunity. That opportunity. We need your support as well, and we can't push this off any further as our organization's survival is at risk. Thank you so much for your time, and I'd now like to open up the floor to any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, no, uh, presentation, very well done. And uh, I think you raise a great point that the youth and government program is already receiving $150,000 yeah. annually, and your organization seems like it should uh, receive some help as well. And what that ultimate dollar figure looks like, I think, can be a point of discussion. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can engage with the superintendent's office as well on this topic, and I'm sure the vice chair would as well. And uh, we'll continue the conversation. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'd now like to introduce the next group.
Good afternoon, Assembly members. My name is Bridget Lee, and I am a junior at West Ranch High School in Los Angeles County. My name is Pratik Rao. I am a junior at Monta Vista High School in Santa Clara County. Hi, my name is Josh Dogos, and I am a junior at Excelsior High School in San Bernardino County. From the 2012-2013 school year to the 2014-2015 school year, students in the state of California went from 95.8% proficiency in language arts and math skills to below 50% proficiency in both categories. In 2009, the National Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium, or SBAC, was formed to create a new computerized test of common core standards. These standards were meant to test modern thinking skills, such as critical thinking, persuasive writing, and technological literacy. This test would not only gauge students' mastery of the new standards, but also adapt to their capabilities rather than testing along what seemed to be a fairly low baseline. 56% of students in the class of 2016 did not meet standards for English language arts, and 67% did not meet standards for mathematics. Delegates at the Student Advisory Board on Legislation and Education identified several root causes for the subpar performance based on their collective observations. The root cause that we have pinpointed is the lack of incentives to perform well on the SBAC test. Students, even in high-achieving districts, feel that it's unnecessary to take the SBAC. We delegates asked the state superintendent, Tom Torlickson, convene an advisory panel in order to incentivize the SBAC and, and individual results in a way that brings the tests to relevance for students. So I attend Monta Vista High School, and we were like 16th in the state. But until this conference, I had no idea that the SBAC even existed. Coming from, an high, coming from a high-performing educational environment, students at my school place a high priority on SAT, ACT, and advanced placement tests because they see they are important to the admissions process for public and private universities. On my birthday, I went to an AP US History Study session, followed by an SAT class, and then right to bed. I would have never done that for the SBAC test because I had no idea it existed. The SBAC is just not relevant, at least not to the extent that the College Board tests are. One potential solution is to formulate a re recognition system similar to national merit to identify and validate all students who score well each year. Students at my school will do anything to look good on a college application, and a nationally recognized test would be significantly, significantly more attractive for high-achieving students. I attend the North Victorville campus of Excelsior Charter High School, where the SBAC is overlooked for different reasons. Our school's socioeconomic makeup is significantly different from that of Monte Vista's, with 47% of students categorized as economically disadvantaged. Students are more focused on finding jobs and simply getting by with minimal knowledge of their curriculum. Thus, an incentive to reduce the financial burden of students would highly motivate our lower income demographic. For example, a high SBAC score could correspond to reduced application fee waivers for CSUs, UCs, or community colleges. Implementation of these fee waivers would highly benefit the local income students that attend Excelsior by motivating and encouraging them to further their education. Our solutions are designed to make impactful change for students of all demographics. Creating an incentive and increasing student investment in the SBAC will thereby increase their interest in Common Core. We want change in our districts. If students are invested in Common Core and dedicated to learning it, then improvements in their curriculum will be made more quickly and efficiently. Currently, students have the option of using their SBAC scores as a placement test in CSU and community colleges. However, this incentive does not convince students from all backgrounds to take the test seriously. At South Pasadena Senior High and Albany High School, higher achieving schools, students opted out of this test because their districts had planned for SBAC just two weeks before advanced placement exams. These exams, which provide college and university credit for higher level courses, are much more attractive to students than the SBAC. Thus, their focus shifts away from the Common Core and towards the AP test curriculum. So we understand that the SBAC has only been administered for one year so far, and we do recognize that it may be too early to collect and analyze data from the SBAC. However, if this trend of low performance and student disinterest continues, the state will collect an inaccurate measurement of the student's comprehension of Common Core standards. The incentives suggested in this proposal seek to encourage students to take the SBAC with their best effort, which will improve the state's performance in all areas. 
Previous efforts have been made to incentivize the exam already. In 2013, the proposed bill AB 959 recommended that the state superintendent work alongside CSU trustees and UC regents to create some sort of incentive system for the SBAC. However, this bill was not observed closely and thus died in committee. Our delegation seeks to recognize students for their achievements in tangible and relevant ways. Consequently, curriculum will be changed to adhere more strictly to changes in legislation regarding Common Core, improving the overall SBAC scores statewide. Overall, we are asking the Assembly to create a panel that will research and establish an incentive program regarding the SBAC. We have provided two sample incentives a recognition system, and UC and CSU fee waivers, along with other rationale behind them. Even if the Assembly does not implement our incentives, we urge that it recognizes the need for incentivizing the tests and pursues change in that matter. Thank you, and we now yield our time for questions. Thank you, and thank you for your ask. And uh, it's, it's, it's a question that I've pondered many times. How do we incentivize students to do well on tests, right? Um, and again, the SBAC, as has been mentioned, this last year was the first year, and it's a big change in our educational system, probably the biggest one in the last 20 years, because we're going to teaching skills from content. We used to teach content, now we, we focus more on skills, which is a good thing. It's going to take us some time to get there, to kind of reboot our California educational system to get there. Uh, teachers are working hard, students are working hard. I have my own two children that bring, my daughter, my fifth grade daughter brings home Common Core Math, and I just scratch my head sometimes at that, at that to be quite honest with you. Uh, but again, I think the, ins, the ins, how do we incentivize uh, this is, is a good question. It is one that has been pondered before. Uh, should we, you know, somehow use the SBAC instead of the Casey, right, the California High School Exit Exam? Mm -hmm. Should we, you know, swap them out, you know, even though the High School Exit Exam is on hold right now? Um, should we use the SAT? instead of the SBAC. Uh, that's been a question that's been pondered up here as well. So um, just know that your question is, is very relevant. It is one I have studied myself, not one I have solutions on at this point, but again, a very relevant question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no further comments, thank you. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our next topic is <clears throat> Common Core State Standards. Good afternoon, Chairman O'Donnell, Vice Chair Olson, and esteemed Assembly members. My name is Rose Ryan from Bret Hart Union School District and Assembly District 5. My name is Cora Fessler from Siskiyou Union High School District and Assembly District 1. And my name is Julia Greensfelder from the Albany Unified School District and Assembly District 15. Today, we will address the confusion surrounding Common Core and its implementation. When Common Core is brought up amongst my peers, there is an apparent consensus. California students do not understand the purpose of Common Core. They are not able to materialize the curriculum, nor are they sure if it is or is not incorporated into their educational experience at all. Common Core aims to enable students to use and improve pivotal skills such as critical thinking. Yet, we have found that students are not reaping the potential benefits of Common Core. From my experience as a math tutor for younger students, I've seen the confusion linked with Common Core. I'm a high schooler taking college level calculus and I can no longer do eighth grade math. <laughs> the implementation of Common Core has been cumbersome and it is no mystery as to why. Feedback from stakeholders is not being taken into consideration. In order to properly address this issue, we must listen to those who are directly affected by the use of Common Core and develop an effective line of communication between our stakeholders. The lack of discussion between all those impacted by and managing Common Core only furthers the disparity between idea and implementation, between policy and application. In addition, 62% of responders to the National Public Policy Poll falsely believe history is included in the Common Core standards and 34% of responders believe climate change is involved as well. As we can see, there is an apparent miscommunication between our stakeholders. In the past, legislation has recognized the importance of student feedback, demonstrated through bills such as Senate Bill 1422, which allows for students to collect student feedback, which allows for teachers to collect student feedback, excuse me. 
We wish to highlight the significance of feedback and improve the implementation of Common Core by amending Education Code 52853, which sets forth a list of responsibilities required of school site councils. Currently, school site councils hold such responsibilities as the development of instructional strategies, the establishment of an annual school budget, and so forth. We propose that an additional responsibility be added to the list, the creation of an annual system for stakeholder feedback on their experiences with Common Core. These stakeholders would include students, parents, teachers, and administrators. It is crucial that this proposal be adopted now to supplement the initial Common Core Implementation Committee, which was disbanded last November. Our proposal would allow each school site council to create a system for collecting and considering feedback, specifically pertaining to Common Core. We understand Governor Jerry Brown's support for localization and the need to maintain district autonomy because each district operates differently. This proposal supports Brown's perspective while still addressing the overall confusion surrounding Common Core implementation. We are not specifying what the site council must do with the results they collect, nor how they collect the feedback. Rather, we are proposing that the school site councils simply gather input from their respective stakeholders, which will allow them to use the data to make more informed decisions on how to improve the implementation of Common Core in their own districts. We recommend that this process be in place for five years on an annual basis. If a school site council deems it necessary to continue collecting data after this five-year period, then they may continue. Simply put, there are no systems in place for individual schools to identify the problems regarding Common Core implementation. Considering the Common Core implementation period ended last November and these schools are still struggling, our proposal is imperative now. Our proposal gives school site councils a vehicle to collect feedback from stakeholders, which addresses the issue of not knowing what has gone wrong with the implementation process. With this newfound information, they can act accordingly. We cannot emphasize enough how important it is for these stakeholders, especially teachers and administrators, to solicit feedback on Common Core in their specific areas. For example, an Albany High School math teacher reported a so far successful Common Core rolling implementation plan during a recent site council meeting. She was ecstatic in explaining the increase in collaboration and group work amongst her students and was even more excited to report their enthusiasm. However, her excitement did not coincide with the experience of the Albany High students involved. While, interviewing, um, while being interviewed on her feelings about Common Core, a freshman in this teacher's class stated, teachers used to show us how to do the problems. Now they have us figure them out. It is easier because it is slower, but I only really learn at the end when the teachers talk about the problems that I got wrong. This student, among many others, does not feel that the Common Core curriculum is helping her to succeed. If there had been a transparent feedback system in place, then the student would have been able to provide feedback related to her negative experience, and then the class could have been altered and improved. Education is a two-way street, and allowing school site councils to solicit feedback and control their district policies will lead to more informed and personalized decisions for each district, exactly what Governor Brown wants. Without receiving their feedback, they have no way of knowing what does and, was, and does not work regarding Common Core. As students, we are the ones who are asked to complete worksheets we simply don't understand. We are the ones who are unable to tutor our younger siblings because we can no longer grasp concepts as simple as 7th and 8th grade math. And we are asking you to give us a voice. And this proposal will just do that. By adding this responsibility, we will bridge this gap in communication. This will create schools where small issues such as the lack of understanding in math and English classes can be fixed before the problems lead to a perpetual cycle of misunderstanding. Your support for this proposal will create an environment where students feel that their experiences and their opinions matter. It will create school systems that help students, school systems that truly educate students, school systems that prepare students for the rest of their lives. This proposal will lift California to become a leading state in public education, and we implore you to consider it and to give California students a voice. Thank you, and we yield our remaining time to questions. Thank you. Very well done, I might add. Um, uh, listen, I'm a stakeholder, too. Uh, having two children, being a classroom teacher, and being the chair of education, this is very important to me. Common core implementation is very important to me, and that we get it right, and I don't know that we've got it right yet. I think we've been doing a lot of work, but I'm not sure we've honed it down to that point. But some of the themes I heard today, I heard math a lot, right? I think we're all struggling with Common Core math, um, as am I in my own home. So uh, you can be sure that's a, a, you know, a topic of interest to me as well. 
and also we talked about accountability really at the local level but when I think of Common Core I, I there's got to be some reciprocal accountability here if the state said yes in California we're going to impose if you will Common Core on our local school districts then the state should offer more tools to not just school districts teachers but also families so that Common Core is more transparent and I don't think we're there yet I don't think there's anywhere a parent can go and really understand what Common Core is, be it a test bank or something like that, that is uh, statewide so that Modoc County, Los Angeles County can share the same place so that information is in one place and it is not different in the 58 counties in California. So that's something I've been studying, uh, you know, as someone who was in a classroom just, what, 13 months ago, uh, Common Core, I, as a teacher, I, I, I was struggling with it when I left. And uh, when I go back, I, I don't want to struggle with it. I really want to know what it is. Uh, so um, listen, I share your concerns and share your opinion that we get this right.